My name is Phil Perry. I'm a current resident in Swan Point um, in Charles County. Um, on 9-11, I was a uh, captain in the Alexandria Fire Department um, when, when the event took place at the Pentagon. My name is Elizabeth King. I currently live in Densville. been a Charles County employee for almost 24 years now, and I am currently working part-time as a Charles County 911 dispatcher. But on September 11, 2001, I was a paramedic with the Alexandria Fire Department on duty that morning. It was a beautiful day like it is today. Um, get up in the morning, have to take the dog to the vet. There at the vet, see, comes over what was alphanumeric pagers back then, uh, and read that uh, one of the buildings in New York City had been hit by a plane. Didn't seem that odd at first. And got the next page that uh, the second building had been hit. Then it, I began to wonder, you know, what what's going on and then before leaving the vet at that point got a report of a possible helicopter down at the landing pad at the Pentagon wasn't adding up didn't make any sense so once I was done with with the dog at the vet started heading back to my home at the time was in welcome um, before I got there I got an alert that uh, all fire department personnel to report to their stations. And that's when I knew it wasn't good. Then of course, the radio broadcast letting us know what had happened. So at that point I go home, gather up my things that I normally take to work. I give my wife a kiss. Uh, it's her birthday on 9-11, so she didn't get one that year. Um, and my six month old son kissed him goodbye and I wasn't sure what was gonna happen after that. Reality didn't hit until I crossed over the Woodrow Wilson Bridge on 495 and looking towards the district and seeing the plume of black smoke as it bellowed across the Potomac. And that's when I realized, you know, this was real and it was happening here. And, uh, we didn't think that was the last one. And luckily, if luck be have it, but in Shanksville, the people on that plane saved many lives that could have happened even more in the district, so. We came to work. It was an absolutely gorgeous day, one you didn't want to be at work for because you wanted to be outside enjoying the day. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. And we were down in the basement at one of the firehouses working out like we did every morning. And somebody came over the loudspeaker and said, a plane just hit the World Trade Center. So we all came running upstairs and we turned on the TV. My family's from New York and New Jersey. So I called my sister who works in Connecticut to find out what was going on. And she didn't even have a TV on. She didn't know anything about it. So she turns her TV on and we're chit-chatting back and forth and we see the second plane hit the World Trade Center. And just then, I'm on my cell phone with her, she tells me they have a report that a plane hit the Pentagon. And just as she said that, the tones in the firehouse went out for a fire at the Pentagon and my medic unit, Medic 208, was due to respond along with everybody else. So we were technically on the first alarm for the Pentagon. I was working with a rookie partner who had just become a paramedic, told her make sure you grab your fire gear, take your cell phone, because we're going to be there a while. And we left the firehouse. 
and the fire station I was at is right off of 395, but we kind of knew that it was going to be impossible to get to the Pentagon that way. So we went in near Ash National Airport, and I guess it was pretty fortuitous that we did because we came in the backside of the Pentagon, and just as we're pulling up, somebody starts flashing us flagging us down. They had an injured Virginia State Trooper who had seen the plane crash into the Pentagon and had gone, he was on duty. He went straight to the Pentagon and started pulling people, guiding people out. And he had inhaled a bunch of jet fuel and he was getting sick. We wound up transporting him to the hospital. So we went back to the Pentagon after dropping him off at the hospital. And by the time we were able to get through traffic and get back to the Pentagon, whoever was going to be alive had been transported. So uh, we were directed to park our ambulance over by Fort Myer and walk the rest of the way to the Pentagon grounds. And the um, engine, the first arriving engine from Alexandria was engine 207 and they happened to be parked right in front of where the plane struck the building. So we walked over to them, me, my partner and two other paramedics. We went over to engine 207 and just watched because there was nothing for EMS to do. There, there, it was, nobody else was coming out. Uh, you know, this was at probably noontime. Nobody else was coming out of that building alive. So we had a rally point uh, at one of the firehouses and they were getting buses together and getting all the firemen and women together and getting your gear together and what was going to happen. You can imagine it was still under a state of confusion when we got there around one, two o'clock in the afternoon. Obviously the building was still burning. The injured, for the most part, everybody had, had been uh, medevaced uh, to different hospitals. So our job was just try to get the fire out and search for those who still might be in the building. But when we initially got there with the bus, it was so chaotic, we were directed to a firehouse where we were to stage. But that wasn't our order. So we kind of took it upon ourselves, like, now this isn't right. We need, to, we need to get up to the command post, to the fire command post, because there were multiple command posts. Finally got to the command post, fire command post, and we were given assignments pretty quick. Um, so we ended up with attack lines going into the building to knock down the fire, search for anybody that still may be left. That went on for two days, the firefight. Of course, we left, we were put on two shifts. We were on 12 hour shifts, so we had a day shift and a night shift. We fought fire for two days and uh, once the fire was put out, the Special Operations Division, which I was part of also at the time, uh, we ended up staying at the Pentagon for over a week and a half, two weeks, to help support the efforts of shoring up the building and removing the remains. We did not run a single call the rest of the night back at the firehouse. I don't know why. I don't care why. We didn't run a single call. I went home the next day. It was another gorgeous day. Um, I pulled into the driveway of my house and my dogs were barking. And I just sat in the middle of my living room and cried. I'd never seen anything like that. I never want to see anything like that again. The 13th, I was asked to fill in a firehouse in Arlington on a medic unit. So I did that. And then um, when our tech rescue team from Alexandria joined up with Arlington's tech rescue team, I was asked to be the paramedic on the team. Uh, for one of the shifts and also do logistics. So I was assigned to nights. So we did 12 hours on, 12 hours off for two weeks. The guys would go in and shore up and do search and rest, do search. And when they found the remains of somebody in the Pentagon, all work would stop. And the honor guard from the army would come out and physically remove the remains. 
and take it to the coroner's bus. And then once that was completed, work would start again. And that went on for two weeks. And then they decided after that that the building had been shored as much as it could possibly be shored up and they had found as much as they could possibly find of the remains and we were discharged and dismissed back to our firehouses back to the city of alexandria your thought process you go through a lot while you're there business as usual as far as being a, a, a firefighter and, and doing your job um, and then in the special operations, showing up the building, but realizing how many people had perished there. Um, we were still wondering about our friends in New York City. We have the fire community is a very small group, even nationwide. So we have friends up there and we, we didn't know what, what has gone on, if they were even alive. So even while we were working, there was a lot to process. After about a week or so, they were allowing people to come in and put little memorials up at the Pentagon. So that kind of hit home um, for a lot of us because it, it personalized it. So the week following coming home or going to work, or both of them, it, it's a lot to take in. There were times where, you know, you didn't sleep a lot. You know, the different dreams, different thoughts, you know, constantly in your head because you spent so much time in, on the front line they're working and then and again worrying about those in new york and what they're going through you know i honestly couldn't believe it i, I mean it was I, I sat there and i watched it happen and i still couldn't process it and the whole two weeks that we were there, we had a job to do just like we did any other time we were on duty for the fire department. So I didn't process any of it until I didn't have to go back there. And I just was angry. I was angry that it happened. I was, I guess I was angry. I was I was incredulously proud of the citizens of the United States of America that they responded the way they did. That's the first time I think I've ever seen the country as united as it was. And people, you know, I'd be on the ambulance, we'd be riding around the city and people are waving to us and thanking us. And that part was kind of neat because they recognized what we did, but it was just, it was just different when we came back. I, it's, it's different. And now in 2021, it's even, I work with people who were five years old, who haven't got a clue what it was, who don't understand what it meant. And to me, that's sad. At the 20th anniversary, I would like to say, well, you know, wow, but it's the same every year. There's an emotion that you go through and it, it still hurts the same day, just as the, as the day it happened. Um, but with time, people tend to forget. People tend to soften, except for maybe those that were directly affected. Um, I, I think about Pearl Harbor Day and what it means for people now, our age, even about Pearl Harbor, yeah, it's a day we lower our flags and we and we remember. I feel like one day that's kind of going to be 9/11. It, it fades over time. The hurt, because those who were actually there and, and knew where they were the day it happened, we're going to be moving on. So, just ask people to remember and never forget those who who perished. People were evacuating the city and firemen and police were going into the city, not knowing what they were going to see, find out, or have to deal with during the day. Knowing those firemen on 9-11 in, in New York City, all of them kind of looked at each other knowing what the kind of end result was going to be and nodded, nodded at each other, shook hands, and 
went upstairs to do their job knowing that they may not come out. So, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of thought and a lot of emotion even today, 20 years later. I think they need to understand what happened that day. And I think I, I could sit there and talk, talk to somebody until I'm blue in the face about it, but I think until you see the pictures, until you see not just the firefighters and paramedics and police officers' faces, but to see the people who were running away from the World Trade Center, or to see, I mean, they're, to, just to see them emerging from the, from the cloud of dust. There's a picture that of its ladder, FDNY's ladder, and they're on one of the highways going in there. I think they're based in Brooklyn. And they, it was, they were on um, a road going into Manhattan and all the members perished in the World Trade Center. And it's the last picture of that ladder truck responding on any call. And you can see the pictures in the background of the World Trade Center on fire. And you see this ladder truck racing in. Everybody else is walking out on the other side, but they're racing in. And until you see something like that, you can't understand what it meant. And I think it's important that, you know, just like we teach Pearl Harbor, just like we teach anything else in history, I think people need to study it. I think they need to go back and look at it. It's still fresh in a lot of our minds, and I, I don't want to see it. I don't want that feeling of camaraderie to disappear. The best honor is to be as together as we were the day, the week, the months afterward. We were patriots. We were Americans. We were going after whoever hurt us and hurt our people. We didn't have division. We didn't have color. We didn't have nationality. It was just Americans. And I think if you want to honor those who, who sacrifice even today for this country, is to be that American and be that patriot.